Hello again, I am Blunty, and this system right here is an ultra-compact little sort of low-end steam machine kind of clone uh, that we built here on the channel. It's been through a couple of different bodies already, this latest incarnation I'm calling Little Anvil, because it's small and it's incredibly dense, and if you want to see the build log of, you know, this tiny little case and squeezing a full gaming rig into this ridiculously small volume, just 11.5 litres, there's a link to the video on your screen and also in the down below area, but... Today, I want to talk about uh, the way memory affects gaming on a system like this, where there are choke points. There's the, you know, a low-end CPU and the lower-end graphics card and the GTX 950 and an i3. And when I was first building the system, HyperX were very kind enough to actually supply the memory for the build. Uh, now, originally, I had planned to put four gigabytes in here because that's what the low-end Steam machine that I was kind of cloning had, the Alienware sort of i3, the, the lowest-end Alienware. 4 gigs memory, i3, I was going to do that. But when it came time for the build, the uh, HyperX people didn't actually have the memory that I intended to use, and they sent me a 16 gigabyte kit instead of slightly faster memory. Uh, and I went, fine, like I'm going to say no to that. More memory, faster memory, excellent. And a little while after the build, they actually did wind up sending me the original slower 4 gig memory that I intended to put in there to be a more representative Steam machine. So what we're going to do today is put it through its paces. We're going to look at the 4 gigabyte slow memory, or well, slower, it's not slow, slower memory, and the 16 gigabyte faster memory to see how much of a difference it actually makes in real world gameplay terms when you're dealing with a budget minded system like this little fella here. So let's get to it. Now, I ran my testing with a few different AAA titles Tomb Raider, GTA 5, Just Cause 3, Star Wars Battlefront, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. All are being tested at 1080p with settings recommended by the GeForce Experience. We'll start with the oldest game first, the Tomb Raider reboot from 2013. Minimum system requirements want just 1 gigabyte for this game, and recommended system requirements call for 4 gigabytes. So, on the face of it, any difference we see here should be down to just the speed difference of the memory itself. And in the benchmark, max FPS remains identical actually. However, on the slower memory, it does dip lower by about 6 frames per second, 42 FPS compared to 48. To some, that will be a noticeable difference. And during actual real-world gameplay, it's not a difference that seems to rear its head in any obvious way to me. In either configuration, the game remained smooth and playable and enjoyable. And if you built two identical systems side by side next to each other, one with the 4 gig, one with the 16 gig, and made me play these games side by side, I don't think I could tell you which one had which memory. Now, in Rise of the Tomb Raider, just a couple of months old now, minimum spec score for 6 gigabytes of RAM. Recommended says 8. Rather annoyingly, the sequel didn't see fit to have a proper benchmark built in. So, just real-world gameplay here. And perhaps in later, more texture-heavy portions of the game, the 4GB being below the 6GB minimum would be an issue, but at least in the opening acts of the game, there's no appreciable difference. Seriously, you guys, though, I have to find time to actually play through this game properly so I can use the later, more complicated levels for my benchmarks. But for the purposes of these demonstrations, this does just fine. Now, the much more sophisticated and scientific testing from the clever buggers at Digital Foundry, which you may or may not have heard of, have indeed shown that on low-end systems where an i3 CPU maxing out is a bottleneck, memory speed can indeed make an appreciable difference in frame rate. And that was a very interesting bit of testing, but... When a game is set up properly, so ideally the CPU does not max out and create a bottleneck in the first place, it seems the minor difference in memory clock speed that I'm testing with here doesn't have a chance to make a noticeable impact. I mean, sure, it's there if you go looking for it, but as you're playing the game, you'd never know. However, in the next few games I tested, it shows that beyond clock speed, the amount of memory makes a huge difference. And in fact, it was a much bigger difference than I had anticipated. Star Wars Battlefront, for example, this game wants 8 gigabytes as a minimum, so with the system coating just half that, how do things play out? Well, surprisingly, the game actually runs nicely-ish, almost a match for the larger amount of faster RAM, except 
At irregular intervals, you'll see massive dives in the frame rate. The game basically hitches completely as the RAM is maxed out and everything in the pipeline has to wait on it being cleared so everything can catch up to itself. Now, the on-screen frame rate counter isn't quite keeping up with this phenomenon, but you may be able to see it for yourself, and you can certainly absolutely perceive the difference in how the game feels to play with these little hitches and stutters. It is significant. In fact, it borders on unplayable. Even though, as you can see, the frame rate mostly pings up into the fast twitch friendly triple digit range. In Just Cause 3, which just like Battlefront wants 8GB as a minimum, interestingly that 8GB minimum is also the recommended figure. But unlike Battlefront, the larger open world and its complex physics engine make 4GB of RAM utterly balk the game beyond playability. Which again, considering it's half what the game asks for, is no great shock or revelation. Frankly, Battlefront working as well as it did with this much memory is the far more interesting result. But yeah, obviously unplayable, so let's move on. Grand Theft Auto 5 I think was the most popular game on Steam last year and the results here are very interesting. Unlike Just Cause 3 and Star Wars its minimum specs claim 4 gigabytes of RAM is just fine. However, as you can see, having more memory makes a monumental difference to the game while sharing identical settings and identical hardware in all other respects. Just like Just Calls 3, a complex physics-driven open world means pushing a lot of textures and other information in and out of memory constantly. And while the Nipia 16GB in the i3 rig setup has no issues at all, in fact it runs the game quite nicely, if you starve it of RAM, even while giving it the 4GB minimum at once, the game actually becomes catastrophically unplayable now. Now the settings I'm using do run the GTX 950's own comparatively modest 2GB of VRAM to the ragged edge. In fact, I'm deliberately bleeding over that ragged edge, and there are a fistful more things I could turn down to give the system some more breathing room, but as you can see here in this gameplay from the 4GB setup with a more VRAM friendly batch of settings, the game still falls below what I would consider playable, and what's more, not only is everything turned all the way down, I'm running it at 720p. And there it is, the whole point here was to show the difference the RAM can make. And in this case, it's not so much the speed as it is the amount. Now, none of this is new information, of course, but it's one of those things I've always wanted to try and see with my own eyes, exactly how drastic the difference is. You can read all day long in forum posts and things about self-proclaimed experts saying this or that about the memory and the memory speed and the amount of memory and all that kind of stuff, but... You know, until you do it for yourself, or at least see someone do it in a real-world practical setup like I have here, then they're just words, aren't they? And while I expected the results in the Just Cause 3 and Battlefront tests, because they explicitly want 8GB minimum, which GTA 5, which flat out claims 4GB, will get you by, on this system, even with literally every last graphical option turned down and diving from 1080p to 720p, nothing was enough to get it to a playable state. Only changing the RAM, giving it the breathing room of 16 gigabytes of RAM, not only does it run smooth, but it ran smooth at 1080p, and it ran smooth at 1080p with several of the options turned up to high, and while redlining the VRAM on the GTX 950. So, the long and the short of it is this. In any future system that I build, I'll be overbuilding on RAM. In my main rig that I built about seven months ago, Devil's Crevice, I chose 8GB of RAM because that's what's widely accepted to be just fine for games. It is at, or above, the recommended specs for pretty much any modern and current AAA title. And in that system I also run a GTX 980 Ti and the top-end overclockable Devil's Canyon i5. So clearly there's not nearly as much bottlenecking potential there as there is in Little Anvil here, with its deliberately low-end budget-friendly specs of an i3 and a GTX 950. But it's very clear from these tests that overbuilding on memory is a relatively inexpensive way to build in an extra bit of future-proofing and kick potential performance up several notches. You can see for yourself, plentiful memory can make a vast difference to game performance under certain circumstances. It's the difference between being utterly unplayable under any condition and smooth, high frame rate play with a bunch of settings on high. So there, you've seen the evidence for yourself. Now it's your turn to tell me what you're going to do in your next build, or are you going to upgrade the memory in your current build? Because obviously, it makes a difference. And like I said, it was a far bigger difference than I ever expected. I mean, I knew, you know, 
more uh, more memory and, and faster memory is going to make, at least on paper, a theoretical difference. And I thought in the real world, you know, we'd see that and it would sort of have some impact. Uh, at least I was hoping it was going to have some impact because otherwise we're always spending way too much on components, aren't we? But as it turns out, we're not spending too much on components. In fact, we could probably stand to spend a little bit extra, uh, particularly when it comes to the memory when we're building a system, particularly if you're building on a budget low-end system and you're trying to squeeze out every last drop of performance that you possibly can from your system, trying to keep it you know, as, as inexpensive as possible. And as it turns out, more memory is a super good way to do that. So there you go. Please do the thing in my down below area to make me happy. I think that was the worst one yet. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. And we'll catch you next time. I hope this has been as interesting for you as it has been for me. Because for me it was really interesting.